Hey, I've got a question. Where's all the good GRC analyst training? I first asked that question when I was outside cybersecurity trying to break in. I asked it again after breaking in, going from the frying pan into the fire of a mid-career transition coming from accounting. I have tons to learn about the skills, methods, and mindsets needed to do my new job. I asked it a third time on the other side of the table as a GRC hiring manager. If we look at red teamers and offensive security, they have lots of great training options because obviously hacking is super cool, which Hollywood tells us all about. Blue teams are also super cool as the shield and backbone frontline defenders. GRC analysts, however, like me on the second line of defense, number one, did not make the cut for the SANS 20 coolest cybersecurity careers poster, which I think is a missed opportunity. And number two, we don't have a long list of training options. Thankfully, Gerald Osher, PhD, whose YouTube channel has 4 million views, has stepped in to fill the training void with his GRC Analyst Masterclass. I took this class a year and eight months ago. I reviewed it again recently, and I found additional content that uh, wasn't there the first time, and everything that was there was just as relevant today as it was when I first took it. If you've seen my GRC Certification Roadmap version 1.0, I've got it in the middle of ask, answering the question, what shirt should I get? What training should I take? And you'll see that I have it in the intermediate one stage. Now, I've already gotten your feedback. Thank you for that. And let's keep that discussion going, that it doesn't necessarily need to be at the intermediate level. It can be beginner. But the reason I like it in intermediate one is that it emphasizes getting that foundational security plus type domain knowledge first. And then within an appreciation for the underlying technology in the broad domains, uh, each of which is a career in itself, now we can apply that knowledge to govern, assess risk, and compliance, GRC, across those, those topics. Some of them are very technology-focused, obviously, but also there's a lot of people in process there. If you think of incident response communications, for example, that's a big piece to that's not blinky lights, that you want to have a handle on the process before you get into compliance and, and governance of it. So just to reiterate, this class has no prerequisites, it easily connects with both beginner and intermediate audiences. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can ask people that have taken the course in the Simply Cyber Discord server or check out GRC Study Hall with Chris Whitlock. Today, I'll tell you what I learned in Chapter 4 of the course, Risk Management. The R is my favorite part of the G, the R, and the C. And I'm going to make other videos in the future about other chapters, including compliance, where I've got a few hot takes. So I look forward to that. Now, after seeing my thoughts on the course, if you decide to register for it, Use the affiliate link at my blog, and I'll send you my study notes. And not just for chapter four, but all of them. And if you reply to that email with any questions, I'll do my best to try and answer those and get you where you want to go. I've outlined my study notes for chapter four with a summary at the top of what I learned in mindset, method, and skill categories. The first bullet I jotted down from the course under mindset is awesome. It says, of all things that a GRC practitioner does, risk is the heart and the center. That's so true. Could risk work can add a ton of value to a company. And GRC has a superpower in the risk domain to provide that value. And that superpower is that we have a broad view of risk of the company that's quite unique. Auditors get it. Top management gets it. But a lot of the departments are very narrowly focused on their specialty, and they don't get to see that big picture of risk. And so where GRC can make an outsized impact is in risk. And it's because with that work, we can help the company prioritize where to focus. I found it to be a little bit similar to accounting, where you're that compass that helps management navigate and make decisions to manage risk and to capitalize on opportunities. And so, you know, it's a cool topic. I think you can do great things if you do it well. So next, mindset. Put in the work. Of course, quality is more important than quantity. But as you do the risk work, Dr. Osher emphasizes that quantity is what produces quality. So you got to put in the reps. There's no getting around it. So basically, you've got to go through the list of controls. You've got to hammer through the intake tickets for risk assessments. And each time, we absorb the information, think critically about it, talk to people, do research, figure out how we can help them, not be the office of the cis no, but to be the office of the cis yes, but can you do it in this way? Or you know, how, can we, uh, how can we help you in a, in a, in a risk-appropriate way? You get feedback on your work, lather, rinse, repeat. So I added a lot of my own uh, kind of perspective and experience there, but you know, lather, rinse, repeat is certainly uh, something that was emphasized in this course that I really liked to get our GRC mindset right. Next, when you're assessing risk, nobody cares about your opinion unless it's defensible. Quoting the course, we don't want willy-nilly statements. Back them up. Also, 
apply your business acumen to communicate return on security investment, ROSI, to management. Of course, technology is a big component in cybersecurity, but at the end of the day, it's a business problem. And if to reduce risk you've highlighted as a GRC analyst, you're going to ask for other people's time and energy, or to hire new people, or buy new things, you'll have to make a business case that competes with all the other departments and what they think the company should invest in, which might be sales, marketing, operations, product development, customer support, legal, finance, and everything else. So with this return on security investment, you need to justify the spend you think the company should make for cyber risk reduction, which will then compete with the other departmental needs. Details of how to do this is outside the scope of the course, but the course highlights it as an area of importance, and that helps get our mindset right. Also in the course, and generally in Simply Cyber Content, they use this avatar of Carl, who I see as a grizzled and grumpy system administrator. I think I've met him a few times in, in real life. And sometimes he represents end users in the business. He has limited time and attention, limited resources. He's overworked and underappreciated. And we need to win his heart and mind by optimizing use of his time, finding win-wins, explaining the business value behind our security and compliance requests, and by being a good business partner. Similar to how there's finance business partners, there's HR business partners, I try to be a GRC business partner. Next, big insight, and it's at the end of the list. Enable the business while protecting it from itself. So I say, I say protect and enable all the time, and I, I just like the emphasis from Jerry here in the course that in managing the tension of those competing objectives and in being very focused on enabling the business and kind of right-sizing your controls, the threat is sometimes on the inside. So you need to be extremely careful in, in adding friction, but you do have that, that mindset of, of due care and due diligence and considering the insider threat in your GRC work, which is pretty, pretty fascinating and challenging and it's an interesting thing to, to have as part of your day job. Up next is methods with a big emphasis on NIST. Jerry just had Dr. Ron Ross on Simply Cyber talking about NIST over the years. Uh, amazing conversation you should check out. And here in the course, we get introduced to the risk management framework from the federal government, also the cybersecurity framework, and of course, the NIST special pubs. I've highlighted two big insights here, and then I talk a lot more about this in Chapter 2, Compliance, which will be a you know, subsequent video I'll make. But here are the steps in the risk management framework uh, here in Chapter 4, which integrates security, privacy, and supply chain risk management activities into the system development lifecycle. First, categorize the information system. Second, select controls. Third, implement those controls. Fourth, assess the implementation. Fifth, authorize. Sixth, monitor. And prepare, the seventh step is just constant throughout. Then you can see in my study notes, I wrote barrier removed. I found this idea that you can rip through RMF's first two steps in a week. Super helpful. Jerry recommends don't get analysis paralysis with FIPS 199 because you're going to find in commercial industry, 80 to 99% of your systems are probably going to be in the moderate category anyway. Before I learned this huge insight from the course, I tripped over this step. And that had been a big deterrent to my adopting NIST until that point. And so now I've aligned everything to it. Like I come from a, an ISO and SOC 2 type background, and I've, I've just aligned everything to NIST, and I, I'm really happy with how it, it organizes the controls. You know, I'm gonna, probably going to talk your ear off about this in Chapter 2, but it is, it is a good framework. And then, of course, we've seen ISO 27001 with its new standard. It adopts NIST too, right? Like there's, it's not just... Jerry's opinion is actually uh, very helpful to the point that it's recognized by, by ISO and other frameworks in terms of being a good, aligning to the kill chain, left and right of boom, uh, just aligning our, our functions and our categories and subcategories of capabilities that we want to protect and enable the business. All right, there's gonna be more on that later. Another big insight was this idea of traditional versus modern approaches to assess risk. Really interesting, like I'd, I'd seen both of the approaches Jerry described in the wild, but I didn't really put it together that, oh, there's two philosophies or two general broad approaches when you want to do this task, and here they are. So the traditional way is what I call soup to nuts, which is all the courses in an elaborate meal, and it's good to cover all your bases going very comprehensively through every single control, but it can be quite overwhelming. It can feel like you're a snake eating a watermelon trying to go through everything in a control environment. And then if we look at the modern approach, it's more agile. It feels to me like the agile software development methodology displacing waterfall. And the example used in the course is for ransomware. So we've got 
a CEO reading a ransomware story in the headlines and asking the CISO, are we secure? That's the wrong question. A better one would be, are we resilient? Or maybe what are we doing to reduce ransomware risk? Then the CISO and the security team put together a briefing of the controls that reduce the risk of ransomware. They do this left and right of boom with the cybersecurity framework functions of identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And they're now ready for a board presentation or an elevator pitch when they inevitably get asked that ransomware question by the business. Similar one mentioned in the course is business email compromise. So we're ready to answer the hot topics we know are going to come up, and we do with the modern approach. And then with the traditional approach, we've con comprehensively looked at our, our environment. Jumping back to skills, there's risk management, risk assessment. I've talked about how this is the fun and impactful part of, most impactful part of GRC, in, you know, in my opinion or my experience. Also from the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers and Studies, the NICCS, they do a good job of telling you how to get risk management roles, including authorizing official and security control assessor, and they tell you kind of how to get there, what skills and competencies are needed. So this, help, this course totally aligns to those, those competencies. On the technical side, I've listed some specific areas from the CISA and CISB bodies of knowledge. We've got risk management, feasibility analysis, and threat modeling. I've also highlighted some enabling competencies covered in the course. Have that questioning mindset, objectivity. Be level-headed in risk conversations. Don't get into fantasy scenarios. And give the business data. Don't just expect them to trust you. Lastly, here are the resume bullets the course unlocks. Semi-quantitatively analyze cybersecurity risk using NIST Special Publication 830, that methodology, to identify highest risk weaknesses for a system. Execute a threat modeling exercise to determine higher likelihood threat events to inform cybersecurity risk modeling. If any of this sounds interesting to you, like it does to me, check out the course. Again, if you use my link, I'll send you my study notes for all the chapters. Also, check out my blog, where you can sign up for a free GRC Skills, Methods, and Mindsets email course I just launched and it's getting off to a strong start. If you find value in the channel, please like and subscribe. Views expressed, as always, are my own, and feedback is always welcome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.